Hello and welcome to the season finale of season two with Chats with the Chairman. I'm your host and chairman of the IICRC Board of Directors, Kevin Pearson. I have a very special guest here with me today, the next chair of the board, Carrie Vermeulen. Welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Glad to be here. Yeah. This it's, is great. Yeah. So this, as you know, is kind of a show about the volunteers of IICRC, how they got involved in the Institute and kind of things that they've uh, done in the Institute. And along the way, we tend to have a little fun along the way. So uh, yeah, but uh, today, as well as having carry on, we're actually gonna have two other very special guests here in a few minutes join the show. Uh, from IAQA radio show, uh, Joe Hughes and Cliff Slotnick. So they will join us shortly, and that should be... That's exciting. Yeah. That, fun that's to exciting. Catch up with them. Yeah. So, but uh, in the Q&A section of the website, or of the Zoom link, you can actually ask us some questions if you want to. So you can type in your question. They'll get to Carrie and I. And we can, um, you know, if you have a specific question you want me to ask Carrie or Joe or Cliff, then we can do that. So um, if not, then you can also email me at kpearson at iicrcnet.org. And I'll be happy to answer your questions offline. With that, welcome to the show again. Uh, you made it in from Canada. Oh. It was a, a big, uh, big trip, I'm sure, because we are, I forgot to mention, we're actually live in Las Vegas at the Golden Nugget, downtown Las Vegas. So, uh, Carrie is from Canada. I am. I am. I did. Um, lots of travel restrictions and just, just process to go through in order to, to board the plane, never mind get across the country and, and make it to Las Vegas, uh, which was no problem. Just a lot of process and, and pre-testing and, and so on. But man, it's so nice to see you. We haven't seen each other in person for like 18 months. So just right. all these Zoom calls and go-to meetings and wow, just to see all my friends. It's, pre it's pretty exciting. Yeah. No, it has, uh, it has been uh, good. We're also had a few technical difficulties today. So sorry, we started the show a few minutes late, but uh, that's just the way it goes when you're live and it, uh, it happens like that. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But um, so as um, the incoming chair and all that, you're going to be taking over here in, I don't know, a few days. But so I guess kind of tell us how you got involved in IICRC originally. And you've been, well, we used to call it president, but it's the same thing, president slash right. chairman. Yes. You've been president before. So how, how all did, uh, how long you've been involved? How did you get involved? Well, I, I originally got involved in 1991. Um, as a shareholder representative for the group in Ontario, Canada, which is now a national group called CFCRA. It was the Ontario group at the time. And I became the IICRC representative. And okay. that was in April of 1991. And um, I, I just, I liked it. I liked the concept. I liked what it stood for. I supported it wholeheartedly. And have always been a big proponent on training and certification. So it was right up my alley. But I, I had never been involved with a group as serious as IICRC. And I, I couldn't believe it. So I enjoyed it. It helped me grow as a person, as a business person, as an individual. It opened my eyes to a lot of different things. I met some of the greatest people in the industry over the years. So I sat as a board member. Um, for 17 years, and wow. in the last three of those, uh, I guess the last five of those, became president 
chairman slash president um, and had served under on the executive committee for for a number of years. And I've served with some great leaders, yourself included, I might might add some of the greatest leaders that ISCRC's had in the industry, uh, out of the industry. It's, it's been it's been a big part of my life and my my family knows that. My daughters, I have two daughters, Heather and Jenna, and they both understand what it means to me to be able to come back and serve again and continue to serve our, our, our fine, fine industry with, with all these great people. So that's maybe more than you wanted to hear, but that's, that's basically how I got there and how I stuck around. Yeah. No, are you, uh, I believe you are the first person to have been chair gone a bunch of years and then come back to be chair again. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true too. Um, and I guess that's, that's really just the way it worked out. It's not that I'm any different or any better than any of the other previous chairman or president, because like I said, we've had some fine people. It's just the way I got back involved in 2016 as a replacement to replace a vacant seat on the board. And then of course, kind of, you know, drank the Kool-Aid again. And <laughs> that's what a lot of people within the IICRC <laughs> yeah. say, because people are either in head first or they're not. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm in head first again. So that's how it all came about. And uh, to get back involved this time around. And it's, it's ironic because uh, I've sat on a lot of different board of directors with a lot of different, ECs and chairman and <clears throat> what I saw when we came back when I came back five years ago I I saw the same thing I saw these people that were so dedicated to our industry and making it a better place I, I I thought wow and I bought in and then I here I am yeah again yeah well just like I guess you you're having a first I might be the first chairman that's had three past chairman on the board right under them, right you know right so yourself pete duncanson and um daryl paulson yes so you know that's kind of a, a unique situation for me very which, yeah. very unique but you know I, the good thing about it is i got three guys that have experience mm -hmm. sitting in this chair that i could call and say hey you know Here's what's going on. You got any advice? Yeah. You know, so it's, 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 it's good uh, in that aspect. Cause you can always, you know, they can uh, you yourself included can kind of say, yeah, I've been in that seat before. I know what you're going through. Yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough call, tough decision, whatever it is. Right. Hang, right. It, hang in there. Yeah, and yeah I, most definitely. I know that's been said to you a few times <laughs> by different folks. So it's unique the way I see ICRC has grown. And we've had, like I said, some of our leaders, some of the best people in our industry. When when you look at you, you had mentioned Lee Zimmerman's name and and then you got Pete and you, you've got Daryl, you've got now yourself. Yeah. You know, prior to that, Ruth Travis, Paul Pierce. You know, uh, and then there's many more before that. I know. And some are still active in the industry. Guys like uh, Dane Gregory, they're still active still out there. Still active. Very much so, yeah. you know. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting to, to be back, I got to tell you. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to kind of see uh, where you're going to take the Institute in the next couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I think that's we'll kind of explore some of that later on too in the show today, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good to kind of catch up with you and it's good to, that you can actually make it in from Canada to be here. We, we tried to I get know. you in uh, what was it, a couple of weeks ago for an executive committee meeting that we had. Yep. And you I made it to the airport I, and that was as far as you made it. I couldn't get past the airport. Yeah. yeah. So thank goodness I'm here. Um, and hopefully this is the start of many more trips back. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, if just in case people 
kind of hear weird things going in the background. We, we also, being in downtown Vegas, there's challenges that come with downtown Vegas. Absolutely. And there's a punk rock concert going on right? outside the, the, the windows right here. And so if from time to time you hear some booming music, that's, uh, yeah. that's what's going on here. But it's just some of the joys of doing this show live. The live show is a great idea. Right, right. Well, um, real quick before we bring Cliff and Joe on, what is maybe one of uh, some of the, the different things that you've done in the Institute over the years besides just being president and, and you know, chairman, being on the board? You served on standards, different tax. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I helped write the original uh, S300 um, upholstery cleaning standard and participated on the water standard and the, the 500 and the 520 over the years. And, um, you know, probably one of the biggest things there was I was part of that, that whole uh, movement towards ANSI accreditation mm -hmm. in 2004, 5, 6. All right. So I understand that we're back <laughs> on now. <laughs> People can hear us again. So, um, yeah, we were running into some technical difficulties again here at the hotel. But, uh, Carrie, I was asking you about things that you've done other than being on the board. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And that uh, revolves around industry things in, uh, you know, our local association. Uh -huh. And trying to, you know, promote professionalism there and, uh, you know, outside of the industry and outside of the board, um, a lot of volunteer work with uh, minor hockey. Um, okay. Both my daughters played minor hockey um, for some time and one stuck it out for quite a few years. So I always volunteered as a coach or an assistant uh, with that. And those types of things. So I've I stay pretty active, um, volunteering and helping people. Yeah, and I guess that's part of what brought me back here too. That's interesting. Over the years, uh, yeah. South Texas, there's not much hockey being played. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, y'all got to get some ice. Right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> not like we hadn't back in February, though. We don't right. want that again. Right. So, right. Yeah. That's funny. So, uh, all right. Well, I, I think we should be able to bring on our two special guests, Cliff and Joe from the IAQA radio show. Yeah, they got big applause. Yeah. yeah. So. Hey, guys. Hey, how's hey, it going? How are you? Good. Uh, good. Good. It's uh, it's great to to have y'all on the show today. Uh, you've kind of heard a little bit of Carrie and I kind of uh, bantering back and forth a bit, uh, but um, I think first, Cliff, I wanted to ask you, seeing as we're having some technical difficulties today. Y'all ever have any technical difficulties on y'all show? Y'all have done this for like 17, 18 years now. Yeah, we've been doing it uh, for a long time. Out of the 639 shows we've done, we've certainly from time to time had, you know, technical difficulties. Anything that could happen uh, did happen. Uh, we had a guest uh, cancel an hour before the show uh, after, you know, she had agreed to do it. Uh, we had... We got hacked one time from Europe on the chat and they started putting all this pornography and, uh, you know, filthy language on there and, uh, you know, had to shut that, that down. But we've always had an engineer from the very beginning. So first my son, Zach, did it and then I had an employee, uh, it, it, uh, you know, on smoke that, that did it. And then we, you know, went through a series of uh, professional people that did it so young people are just much better than the, at this than us old guys are so they kind of know how to handle it and so on and so forth well that's great that's great so is your audio not working no oh can we not uh 
Oh, we can't hear hear Joe. Can't hear Joe. Okay. Yeah. He he went to his uh, other computer. So He's going to his other computer. Himself. All right, I'm back. There, <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, it was, so, when everything got done, it booted me off the other end. So just to make us feel better with our technical difficulties on this end, I there you go. appreciate it. Well, that. actually, yours caused mine, but I'm not going to say that on, on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just trying to make us feel better over here. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, Thanks so, for having us. So y'all have been doing your radio show... Uh, the IAQA radio show every Friday for years. And uh, y'all, I think I've been on the show three times or so. And my, I think it was probably my first time I was on the show. I knew that eventually I was going to be chairman of the board because I think I was chair elect. I think I was sitting in your seat right. as chair elect whenever they first had me on their show. Somewhere during that show, I said, you know, hey, It'd be interesting to have our have a chairman show, you know, kind of like, well, totally different than what y'all do. So, you know, um, but that's where the idea for chats with the chairman came from. And so I thought, hey, for the the season finale of season two, and right before Carrie takes over, it'd be great to kind of catch up with you guys and tell you thank you for. You didn't even know it, but forgive me the idea for this show for the Institute. So thank you and welcome to the show. Thank welcome you. And anyone yeah. who can help. That's right. Yeah. And we appreciate the IICRC sponsorship now of IAQ Radio yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. You uh, both have been on the IICRC board of directors at different times. I served with... Uh, Joe, Cliff, I, I never got the honor to serve on the board with you, but um, maybe if you could both kind of tell us about how you got involved in IICRC and why you got involved. Uh, uh, Cliff, let's start with you and see, see kind of why you got involved okay, um, in all that. I think around nine, in the early 1990s, 1990, 1991, somewhere thereabouts, uh, the IICRC uh, came up with this idea of uh, gaining uh, prominence and acceptance within the industry by selling shares to various regional trade associations. And our regional trade association, uh, Tri-State Carpet Cleaners and Restores Association, uh, became a shareholder. So I think we were probably among the second group of people that uh, purchased the purchased shares. And I actually did a fundraiser, a hands-on training fundraiser that raised the money uh, that we used in order to uh, buy the shares. And my idea was that someone else would sit the seat and there were no other volunteers. So <laughs> uh, I ended up being the, uh, the board's representative and was the representative for uh, 13 years. Uh, I did have the pleasure of serving with Carrie. And Carrie, because uh, we go back and are good buddies and everything, I'm affectionately, from now on, going to call you Rerun. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Cliff. You can, you can call me whenever you like. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm going to call you Rerun. That's all right. That's good. Go ahead. That's better than some of the board members call him now. So, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, I think he knows me better than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. We had a lot of fun in those early days, Cliff, because uh, you were one of the, uh, the key people uh, I met early on in the early 90s. Uh, and then I, after I got to know you, uh, I wound up having a great deal of respect for him. So. Well, thank you. You're very kind. And, and uh, the, the respect is mutual for sure. Thank you. And then I, and then I think uh, Bill Wagon sat our seat and then uh, Joe sat the seat as well. Wow. Yep. So Joe, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved? And I know you spent a little time on the board with me and me and you got to know each other and uh, we had some good times and, uh, we've kind of kept in touch a little bit over the years, but tell us a bit 
about how you got involved in the Institute. Well, I, I've partnered with Cliff now for going on 20 years with um, IAQ Training Institute. And I was more of a industrial hygiene, you know, American Industrial Hygiene Association, Indoor Air Quality Association. I, I kind of hung in those circles. And then after talking to Cliff and then uh, becoming a uh, representative for Triska, I got to know the guys at IICRC. It was kind of a a time when the uh, Institute was in change mode. And um, Tony Wheelwright actually uh, talked to me about being, you know, running for the board. I ran for the board. I think uh, Tony did a lot of really good things and deserves a lot of credit for where the Institute is right now. Um, you know, he was a part of the group that bought the building there. They uh, started the changeover from what was, you know, a perfectly good uh, management company, but one that had never managed a bigger group like IICRC became and started the changeover to a new management company. And that has worked out very well. And, uh, you know, I was happy to serve for the, the time I did. I was only on the board for three years. And uh, you were the first guy I met, Kevin, sitting in a uh, restaurant. I, well, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't call it a restaurant, a fast food place, grabbing a quick like egg sandwich before the first meeting I ever went to. And uh, yeah. I'll never forget yeah. uh, how uh, welcoming you were and uh, all the people at the IICRC. Yeah. Yeah. That was quite a few years ago, but yeah, it's uh, we've, we've always uh, seemed to have a good time and, and get work done at the same time when we've been together. So, well, Carrie, you got any questions for Cliff and Joe? You know, while, while I have these two great minds on the, on the, on the program, uh, you both know uh, IICRC has, has been trying to collaborate with RIA and other groups and we've done some good, some great things um, already, you know, as far as storm response and, and the COVID response. And do you guys see any, uh, and I'll ask the question to both uh, Cliff and Pete. Um, uh, Pete, I'm sorry. Cliff and Joe. Joe. Because <laughs> I started talking about, thinking about RIA and I started thinking about Pete and Zigley. Um, anyway, <laughs> and you guys can relate to that, right? Oh, you're watching, hope you're watching. Pete stays in your mind, Carrie. He stays in your mind, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but you know, we we both uh, we've uh, you've both been around for quite some time. Do you, do you see any other areas where collaboration uh, could be beneficial to to both groups on uh, on different matters, different fronts? Any thoughts on that, Cliff? Um, my thought is there's one. Uh, natural, what I see is a natural opportunity. And then I think that there's some unnatural opportunities. So let's talk about the unnatural ones first. You know, I, I think that it's important to kind of figure out what the IICRC's lane is or lanes are or super highway is. And I think you need to put some sort of boundaries on what you're trying to do and, and kind of where you're trying to go, because, you know, we can't be everything uh, to everyone. But it would seem to me that Siri would be uh, an organization that um, perhaps the IICRC should uh, move closer to or do more potential collaboration with. And I think you have a natural uh, ability to do that because, you know, John Downey's still there and uh, so on and so forth. And I think that there's a good relationship and so on and so forth. So it would seem to me that Siri might be one group uh, with which um, you could potentially do a lot more. That's that for is the that act great. And the and police out there. Yeah, Siri cleaning Institute cleaning Industry Research, Research Institute. Institute. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point there, Joe. We got a lot of acronyms in this industry, don't we? It's hard to know. Them Absolutely. All. And we all assume everybody knows them. And it, it's hard, even, even though Cliff and I have been doing this for 15 years, we used to have a siren that right. went off whenever people used an acronym. And, and we realized our whole audience didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Oh. I, I would say I think there's two groups that – you should try to 
align with more than you do right now, and that's the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, ACGIH, and the American Industrial Hygiene Association, both top-notch health and safety, environmental health and, and occupational health and safety groups. And um, they already, they're aware of IICRC. They're aware of some of the standards. And I think um, being more involved with them would give more credibility to what you do and would put more science behind what you do, just like Siri would. I got that. You know, I, I think alignment it, it, it is important and you just need to kind of, um, you know, be wary of people considering you guys as competition. You know, back in the day, the IICRC was very, very sensitive about competition. And I think back in the day, some bridges were burned because of it. So I think this figuring out what your lanes are, what your highway is and kind of staying there uh, and, you know, trying to avoid conflicts uh, will help you, uh, you know, build better relationships in the future. Yeah. Well, definitely over the past several years, we've tried to build, uh, you know, new relationships with different organizations, uh, you know, to, to help the industry in a whole. That's uh, something we've, consciously done and so i think more importantly kevin you've um revived refreshed some relationships like with ria i think that was huge uh to be able to work with them again and working together in a unified way and like cliff said they have their lane you have your lane and um you guys are very successful and I think working with groups like RIA and Siri, and if you can get more involved with AIHA and ACGIH, it's, you know, the, the future's unlimited for uh, the Institute. Right. Right. Good points. Great points. Yeah. Great points. And I really appreciate the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. So before we let you go, when each of you were on the board, what was kind of uh, some of maybe one of your proudest or most memorable moments when you were on the IICRC board? Joe, I guess we'll start with you. Um, that's tough. I, I think the building was a big one. Uh, buying the building that you guys operate out of now in Las Vegas and in, that gave the Institute a, a home base and um, something so, I don't know, I saw it, I want to say, but it gave you some assets um, and a home base where people can now say, hey, you know, the Institute. It, it, before that, it was managed by, you know, a group up in uh, D.C. or Washington area, Washington State, and you didn't have your own home base. And now you have that. Yeah, that's true. And that's, it's, it's big to, to have our own building. And, you know, Joe, if you haven't been there in a while, the next time you ever make it to Vegas, you need to stop by there and see it. It looks totally different after we oh, yeah. remodeled it yeah. uh, a couple times and all that stuff it looks totally different than what you would remember. So, and it's a nice asset too. I mean, now the, the Institute has a nice asset in its portfolio. Yeah, most definitely. Cliff, what about you? What's something uh, memorable or uh, one of your proudest moments when you were on the board? Um, that was a long time ago. Uh, I think uh, I was, I think I abstained a lot, <laughs> you know, on, on voting. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, when I left, all these people abstained <laughs> and stood up, but uh, I, I think that, you know, in, 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 in looking at the bylaws, we really weren't supposed to vote on things that we didn't have an understanding of and, and, and didn't know about. And I, and I think that there were, was a lot of voting. Uh, you know, people would just tend to get along and go along, you know, rather than voicing uh, a, a, an opinion. Right. And um, I, I, I think that, um, you know, at one point, um, you know, it was almost discouraged. You know, if you're a new person, wait around a couple of years before you, you know, start getting active and, and, and so on and so forth. And I just, you know, if I didn't 
uh, have an opinion, I, you know, I would just abstain. Or if I didn't know enough about it, I, you, know, you know, I would abstain. And uh, I just think that maybe it, hopefully that helped some other people, uh, you know, speak up, you know, when they had something to say. And uh, if they really didn't have an opinion, maybe abstain on something. So, well, that's so good. Kevin, could I add one thing? Uh, I mean, going back, thinking a little more, I, I wasn't expecting the question. I think the mo thing I'm most proud of is I, I fought really hard to make sure that conflicts of interest um, were looked at more carefully. And especially in the education committee where we had existing schools and instructors approving new schools and instructors. And I, I thought that was wrong. Uh, I thought it should be independent of the existing schools and instructors. And at the time, I know we changed it. I hope it's still that way. Yeah. So, um, no, it's uh, very good thoughts there. Um, it's interesting to, uh, to hear what uh, each of your thoughts were from the time that they are on the board, you know? So, um, yeah, I was going to have a special um, sponsor. We had a, a new sponsor on the show today. We've had a little technical difficulty, so it's going to be at the end of the show. So um, you'll, you'll just have to stick around and, and see it later. Um, we can't exactly make it run right now. So anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. But I did want to tell you before you, each of you left, uh, thank you again, even though you didn't actually know at the time that I had the idea for this show. I appreciate all the, the friendship and the, the time on your show over the years and, uh, you know, ultimately spawning uh, this show. So appreciate it. And it's good to catch up with each of you. Good. Thank you, Kevin and Kerry. Good luck. And uh, thanks for your volunteer efforts, both of you. No problem. No problem. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Cliff. Man. Good luck. Yeah. Those guys have uh, been around for a long time. Holy cow. Yeah. Have an awesome show there. So. Yeah. And what, a, what an honor to, to have them participate, share some of their, their thoughts. Yeah. And you know what? A few of those thoughts they had, I mean, aren't we working on them right now uh, yeah. with Siri and with other collaborative means with other groups in the industrial hygiene community and mm -hmm. Mark Drozdoff and all these other folks that we have at the table now. It's pretty exciting. I know. It's I know. pretty exciting. It's something that you can see that they were working on that stuff years ago. And yes. here we are, you yes. know, still kind of going down the same, same path. So it's uh, good, to, good to catch up with those guys. Today's salad world is a dark, unethical world. Oh, they sound good, fresh, crisp, delicious. That's what it says on the menu. But when you love what you do like I do, you ask yourself different questions. You have to. Like I ask myself, where are all these fresh, crisp, delicious ingredients even coming from? So I decided to do some research because I had never even seen the inside of a lettuce factory. Um, I wasn't able to find anything online because they're, I guess, probably trying to hide those. But what I did find shocked me. The conditions things like lettuce and uh, like cheese are grown in, it's very similar to like a puppy mill. The plants are all jammed together. You should see the pictures. There's no room to move. They can't move around. Eating a salad made from stuff like that is like, it's like eating, eating a puppy. That's why the 2005, it's about, it's about locally grown, locally sourced. Why is local so important? The ingredients you eat in other salads, it's probably been grown in another state maybe a whole other country. 
And so I started asking myself, like, if these things are so good for you and delicious, why aren't those other states and countries eating them? Why are they giving them to us? What do they know that we don't know? The 2005 is so local. You probably park next to the ingredients and walked on them maybe even on the way into the restaurant. That's what we talk about when we talk about local. Our motto is why would you buy ingredients when you can find them? Especially when you can find them locally. Local tastes delicious. And if you think about it, and I think we may be the only ones who've thought about it, if you break down the word local, low, cal, it's also healthier. Is it easy to make the 2005? No, it is not. But we don't take that kind of attitude. I always think like, what would people like Little Debbie do if they took that lazy type of attitude? Uh, we wouldn't have things like Ding Dongs or oatmeal cream pies or Star Crunches and Star Crunches are delicious. Sometimes people ask what's in the 2005 because we don't have anything written on the menu about it. Uh, the 2005 is a celebration of local. So it's never the same. That's why you can eat it every day. Uh, we look everywhere uh, locally for something that's gonna taste local. And when you're serious about local, uh, you'd be amazed at what you can find. It's that level of dedication that makes the 2005 salad unique and special. What should you do? Do what I do. Don't eat other salads. They're uh, unethical. They're not good for you. They're from other countries. Come to 2005. Enjoy our salad. Celebrate local. Celebrate the taste of local and ethical and delicious. How about we do a poll question real quick? Sure. So great idea. Yeah, we have a couple of poll questions. Okay. And um, they're probably not too terribly difficult for you and me, but we'll see. We'll see if the audience gets it right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, first poll question is how many board of directors are there on the IICRC board? Good question. Yeah. It's. It, I think it can kind of be a tricky question. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have this little thing called a hash chair. That's right. Who's on the board, but it's not a voting member of the board. So I'm thinking this, how many board of directors are there? It's how many board of directors that vote. So. Right. Yeah. If you look at it that way, then. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so our poll question is up there, and the answer is 15. Oh, great. We have quite a few that got the first one right. Wow. So, uh, when did the IICRC move to Las Vegas? So That's another good one. That's another good that's one. That's another good question. Because we bought the building one year. That's right. It didn't, and, didn't really vacate it right away, did we? No, no, no. no. No, so uh, I think we moved there sometime in 2014. Yeah. So we bought the building in 2013. Right, that's right. Occupation yeah. was later. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's a little, little trick questions there, I think. But, uh, you know, you and I don't come up with these questions. No. There's a whole, like, staff behind the it's, scenes. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't even know people. most of their names. There's that many staff members. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> so, you know, I, I asked Cliff and Joe when they came on what their most memorable uh, time on the board was. But 
you've got you've been involved for a long time now. I think you've been involved since before I actually became a registrant because I didn't become a registrant till 1992. And didn't you say you started oh, in gosh. 1991 on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I became a registrant in 1985, I think. Okay, somewhere around there. Okay, as a carpet cleaning technician. Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so I was a few years after that, but um, in the time that you've been on the board and served in different uh, capacities in the organization, what's kind of been your most memorable moment or something that you gosh so uh, proud of? Yeah. Um, you know, I I already mentioned the ANSI. Uh, uh, accreditation for our standards. That was a big accomplishment a for big the IICRC and the industry. Um, you know, becoming um, becoming chairman of the board for the second time is a is a pretty big deal too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's other things. There's all the great people I've met and all the great friends I I still have today. You know, and, and how they, as I said earlier, how they helped me grow as a person and originally when uh, as a business too, just being exposed to these, these people with different visions. Um, as an instructor, which I started doing in 2005, six, uh, fully, you know, I've been lucky. Uh, I've, I've managed to be the busiest the busiest instructor won the Ironman or Globetrotter Award several times. Oh, well, it's true. You have won that several times in the past. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, these are all highlights in my life. Yeah. And most people might look at me and go, why is he so excited about? Well, I have all these awards and all these plaques in my office um, because they mean a lot to me. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was telling somebody the other day, I don't want um, the certification that's hanging on my wall in the, in a frame right now is the one that has my name at the top and my signature at the bottom. I know. How, how cool is that? Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, so, absolutely. I think even when it expires, it's going to be right there. I was the going to say, just leave it. Yeah. Leave yeah. it right there. Yeah. So that, that is awesome. Yeah. That's the, that's the best one for me anyway, but, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, as we think about Carrie taking over as chair, where, what's kind of uh, your vision of where that institute goes in the future? Well, you know, the, that's, it's kind of ironic that you're asking me that question because, you know, I, I, I kind of just asked a similar question to our guests, Cliff, yeah. Cliff Zlotnick and, and, and Joe Hughes. And you know, kind of what they said is, is kind of where I'm at. Um, more collaboration with different groups, um, getting uh, IICRC known at, at different levels of government uh, so that, <clears throat> you know, I've always I've worked my whole life to make our trade a better place and a more recognized place. And, um, you know, that hasn't changed. Right. You know, what I tell people in my, in my classes, that what we do inside people's houses and buildings is just as important as any other trade. It really is. Right. When we're in there, we're either cleaning for, for health, you know, uh, we're cleaning before health, before uh, appearance, or we're trying to dry a building after it floods, or we're cleaning up after a fire and getting... Uh, toxic uh, chemicals and soot and hydrocarbons and all that stuff that comes after a fire, um, you know, uh, cleaned up. Sure. You know, so in my opinion, what we do in people's buildings is, 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 is just as important as any, any of the other trades. And of course, not take anything away from electricians and plumbers, et cetera. But what IICRC certified technicians do is, is, to, in my opinion, equally as important. And I would like to see the government recognize that. So on that side of it, government advocacy, um, accreditation, 
for our, our classes, our certifications, um, you know, whether it's standalone exams or the other classes, accreditation from groups like ANSI or ANAB, mm -hmm. things like that, that we're, con we're currently working on. Right. I, I'm going to wholeheartedly support those efforts uh, to make <clears throat> the, the uh, IICRC technicians better recognized uh, out there. Yeah, you know, that's important. It's something that we've always uh, wanted to do more of mm -hmm. is get uh, to where uh, people recognize IICRC outside the industry. And, right. And which is only going to help our registrants and our certified firms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, I think uh, one of the burning questions on everybody's mind is, are you going to continue with chats with the chairman? Well, I think this is a great platform, you know, so yes, the intention, okay. the intention is to continue it. Um, I am hoping I can do it half as well as you do. Okay. <laughs> you don't even have to be good. I'm proof <laughs> of that, Carrie. <laughs> I'm hoping that we can do that. I know with the, the technical staff that we have, uh, that it shouldn't be a problem uh, to do it. And I think it's, it's really, it's an important thing for our, our, our registrants and um, for them to see that, you know, we, we are on top of all of the issues and we're trying our best and we're, we're doing it all for them. Well, I'll tell you the secret. The secret is to have better guests than the host. Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> you see, Got that it. way people will tune in to watch the guest and they could care less what I say. Right. So, yeah. Right, that's right, that's right. the secret. You just got to have a really good guest. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll have to remember that. You just have to remember that. Right. So um, let's see. Let's, I think we probably, maybe we still got a few people watching. Maybe we didn't blow everybody out the water. So uh, with our technical difficulties, but so maybe we'll try to uh, give away a little IICRC um, uh, swag here with some trivia questions. Okay. What do you think? Uh, I'm up for it. Okay. How many positions are there on the executive committee of the IICRC board? The IICRC messenger bag is lightweight and can hold all of your items for your computer. Take it between your home and office or when you travel. So that's cool. Somebody's going to win a messenger bag. That's cool. How many of us are on the executive committee? Yeah. Yeah, and that could be a tough question, too. Did you have to, like, sit there and count? OK, we got I had to, you yeah. know, because what? Four years ago, we made a change. Yeah. Right. right. And it changed. It has changed right. four, four years ago. So I had to go, OK, wait a second. Yeah. 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 Because we added a past chair position. That's right. To it. Yeah. So that we didn't have um, in the past. So, yeah. So. The answer is seven. There's seven. Yeah. Seven members on the executive committee. And Katie has won the messenger back. Oh, cool. Congratulations, yeah. Katie. Congratulations. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got another question. And we'll try to give away another lucky listener uh, can win some more stuff. Um, we've released, uh, gotta get my glasses. We released three standards so far this year. Which ones are they? Stay cool with this adjustable IICRC hat. It's nylon material is lightweight, protects you from UVs and is moisture wicking. So yeah, we, we've, We've had three uh, standards come out so far this year. Yeah. I think you and I were kind of talking about this earlier, kind of going, uh, which, you know, which ones are they? But there, yeah. we've had uh, a couple of big ones released. Uh, yeah. You could and say two of, the, two of the top ones and a brand new one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, do we actually 
So we actually do have a winner. Wow. John is the winner. John. So congratulations, John. Congratulations, John. You're going to get that IICRC hat and the three standards that we've released so far this year are the S500, which is our water damage standard, our S100, which is the carpet cleaning standard, and then we had an inspection standard, the S220, that was released earlier this year. Yeah. So it's three standards. So congratulations, John. That's, that's great. Um, so where, where do you see the Institute moving to in the, say the next five years, what kind of things are on the horizon that, that you think that the Institute is going to be moving in that direction? Well, you know, based on the stuff we've talked about already, collaborating with other industries, there's probably some unknowns there. But because we don't really know our potential, once we, we do collaborate with other groups, um, I would like to see the registrant base, you know, double. Yeah. You know, I, I would like to, IICRC, and you know, we all love the IICRC, but our registrant base has hovered around 50, 60,000 for some time. Mm-hmm. And what can we do? to get that to 90 or a hundred thousand. Right. You know, and I think that a lot of the stuff that we're working on currently and, and some of the other uh, efforts that I would like to see happen too, as far as government advocacy goes and, and getting more respect for our certifications. I think that's one of the ways of doing it. So it might take four or years or so, mm-hmm. three or four years uh, with a concerted effort, but I would like to see that. Um, and that in itself is, is massive. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. the Institute has hovered and uh, in and around those numbers for some time, you know, first it was 30, 40,000, then it was 40, 50,000. And now we've been at 50, 60,000. It's time. Right. Time it's time. Take that next step. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree. And even with, uh, all the, the challenges the institutes faced over the last two years, just like every other business. Absolutely. World, you know, we, we've still been able to still uh, continue and grow and bring in new people. And yeah. so it's been a, a good thing over the last two years, even though most, most businesses have had a difficult time. Yeah. The board of directors, you got to hand it to the board of directors because they made those choices to allow live stream training right. for most of the classes, not all of them, but a lot of them. And um, it's helped our registrants. It's helped our instructor base. Uh, you know, it's helped our, our side of the industry continue. So totally. it, was, it was huge. Totally. Yeah. And you know, what I'm excited about, Carrie, is tomorrow we're actually going to have our uh, annual instructor yeah. meeting yes, here sir. in Las Vegas at the Golden Nugget. And uh, it will be the first event that I haven't canceled as chairman So in, in two years. So I will not forever be known as a chairman that canceled every event, just every event but one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that, that, that's, that's happening that's, tomorrow. That's awesome. I decide to cancel it tonight you're not allowed okay all right all right well um, yeah so um let's see um well i want to ask you is there anything you may have wanted to ask me before we sign off on the well, final show of the yeah season two? i you know there is um and i wanted to commend you as well and, and not because this is your final show. Hopefully you'll get on another one. Um, you know, in, in, I know in, a guy. Yeah. You know, a guy, yeah, and, I know a and guy. he knows a guy and <laughs> I know a guy too. Okay. So I'm pretty sure. You're, anyway. Um, but in closing your, you know, your final show. And I, I you know, I have to thank you uh, for one for having me on as your final guest. Um, I, I really do appreciate that. And I also, I uh, want to thank you for 
your leadership uh, of the board of directors for the past two years, because, you know, you've, you've been around now a long time. Um, in like, like how many years total did you, have you been put, have you put in uh, Kevin? Yeah. Well, so I've been on the board now 10 years. Yeah. Um, it's hard to believe, but I didn't have gray hair whenever I started. So yeah, it's been, it's been 10 years and, you know, I was joking around. You may have heard this the other day, but whenever I uh, got on the board 10 years ago, Daryl used to, Daryl Paulson was chairman at the time. And Daryl used to always say, hey, we need more young people like Kevin on the board. And so I told Daryl the other day, he hasn't told me that in a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was starting to get a complex. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. But yeah, so it's been 10 years uh, on the board. And then before um, that, I served on some standards committees and I was a uh, certified firm committee chair. That's right. Yeah. Um, and different, uh, different other things in the organization. But um, I tell you, uh, whenever I got involved, my first involvement was on a standards committee. Right. And when you've never served on a standards committee before, and then all of a sudden you're in a room with a bunch of people and we're arguing for an hour whether there needs to be a comma or a no comma. Yeah. Then you say, oh, geez, it's going to take forever to get through these things. No wonder it takes forever for these standards to come out, you know, but uh, you definitely learn a lot by serving on a standards committee you know, and the, just the people you meet and that sort of thing. So uh, I think it was somewhere around 2005, 2006, I started on standards committee. Right, Back right. Then. That that goes by very fast, doesn't it? It does. Wow. It does. Wow. Yeah. And then one day they call you and say, hey, you want to be on the board? And you're just like, well, okay. And yeah. then here you are. And then you, <laughs> you're signed up. Yeah. Well, you have to admit, though, it's a very fulfilling uh, way to spend some time sitting on the IICRC board of directors because the exposure, the people, right. the camaraderie, the, the frustrations, right. as well as the good, great things that happen. Well, I think the big thing is you're doing things for the registrants in the certified firms, and most of those people uh, you will never meet. You know, right. maybe you'll meet more than I will because you're an instructor, right. but you're still most of them. You're not going to ever meet. And here we are doing stuff that benefits uh, the industry yeah. and our registrants and certified firms, just like when you were a business owner and I was a business owner yeah. and we had those opportunities. It's good to be able to uh, pass those on to other people in the industry and make the the career path easier for them to right. go down. And it's ironic because that's another one of those things that as a board, that's what we're looking at. Yes. Most right. Is, 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 is developing clearer, better um, career paths. Right. Because it is, uh, and, and I've seen it now for the past, as long as I've been involved, which is a long time, um, people are making their careers in, either our cleaning industry or our restoration industry or both. And, and it's their job for life. It's not a part-time job. It's not a, Oh, I'll do this till I find something else. Mm -hmm. People are actually making it their career, which is pretty doggone impressive. Right. Right. But you know, further than that, is there, is there any, anything you wanted to share? Um, Cause they know we're, we're, I think we're running out of time. But um, is there anything you wanted to share that maybe over the past um, year, two, five years, you've not been able to, to really share with anybody? Um, yeah, you know, uh, that's a good question. Because, you know, whenever I was elected as chair-elect, one of the things that um, I guess I didn't really ever think about running for chair or ever becoming chair whenever I got on the board because I had a problem speaking in public. So okay. it's, 
It just seriously, seriously. And I couldn't do it. And it's been hard for me to do it. I don't know if you remember, but several years ago at AIM, um, they said, hey, uh, you have to, you know, get up there and, and dismiss us all. And I said, okay. So I got up there and I think I, Millie Washington had come off the stage before me. And I think I thanked Millie and, you know, said, hey, you know, great job, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or maybe it was a standard summit. I can't remember. Right. But, uh, you know, so I think Millie told her she had a great job and then said, you're dismissed. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was no speech, no nothing. No, no closing <laughs> comments. Right, right. No oh, closing comments. I love it's it. Just, we're done. Get out. Right. You know, so, um, <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that uh, whenever I became chair elect, uh, Steve Moran came to me right. and he said, hey, you know, you're going to have to speak in public being chairman. It's going to be expected because you got to, you know, be able to speak halfway intelligently and, you know, uh, in front of people. Right. And I said, you know, Steve, I've worked on that for years. And, you know, I'd gone to Toastmasters and done different things over the years. And I was still had troubles doing it. And so uh, whenever uh, one of the things I did was I was always involved in a networking group uh, okay. with my yeah. business. And so I said, OK, well, I'm going to run for president of the networking group. Right. And that way I can speak in front of 30 or 40 people every week. Yeah. And I force myself for every week for a year to be able to uh, do that and tell them stupid jokes and just, <laughs> you know, things that would get me uh, to be able to speak in public. And I was still having issues with it, even after that. And one of the things that it seems kind of hokey, even whenever I say it to you today, that I did was I went to a hypnotist and it really helped me kind of fix some of the things going wow. on, I guess. Holy and cow. It, was, it sounds weird. I never thought that, that I would do that or that it would actually help, but Whenever I owned my business, I, and there was a guy, uh, uh, Dr. Marty Lerman, uh, he's uh, in the Chamber of Commerce. And so I knew him. I got to know him over the years and went to him. And actually, uh, you know, since then, it's gotten better. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I never would have thought I would have done a show like this. Right. You know, and so... It's just, uh, it's been fun. And so it's been challenging to me. I've always looked at this as, you know, how can I challenge myself to be better? And that was one of the areas that I needed to right. improve in. Sure. And I think sure. that many people are kind of scared to get involved because they may not want to do something that's to, uncomfortable. To out of, yeah, just out their comfort zone, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, you know, uh, I think people can uh, do that and still walk through it and come out better on the other side. So, you know, don't do something that is just, or don't not do something just because it's scary or unfamiliar to you. you know? Right. Um, you know, so I, that was something that, uh, was real nerve wracking to me, but credit goes to Steve Moran too for coming to me as a friend and just saying, right. Hey, you need to work on that. You know? Right. Yeah. He picked up on it obviously yeah. and thought, okay, I got to help out my friend here. Yeah, he did. He yeah. set me down at uh, breakfast and said, Hey, we got, you got to work on this. Sure. So. Sure. You know, and it's, it's interesting that you say that because I, it, it, at one point in most people's lives, they have that, whether it's in grade six, doing a speech in front of their class or sure. whatever it is. Right. So, um, wow, that's uh, that's 
amazing that you were able to one to share that, but two to actually overcome it too, and in and and not have that. Well, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> There's another meeting tomorrow, another right? Meeting tomorrow, of course, yeah. Yeah. of course. But uh, yeah, so uh, I think we got a couple of things that uh, to wrap up with before we uh, say goodbye. Here um, we got our. Um, Annual instructor meeting is tomorrow, and also our award show. If you didn't see our award show last year, it was live on YouTube last right, year. Right. But this year, it's going to be live on Facebook Live. If you are not, uh, if you don't like mm -hmm. IICRC, the, the page on Facebook, you need to go ahead and like it and join us tomorrow night. So 6.30 Vegas time, we have to do the math. That's like 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern, Eastern time. Yeah. And join us live on Facebook. We, Carrie and I will actually be in 1920s attire along with the staff and all that, uh, you know, a lot of the other people that are coming. We're going to have, uh, you know, costume contest. We're going to actually announce the instructor awards, right? That right. we give every year, the industry awards, and some uh, new additions to the IICRC Hall of Fame. Right. So that we pretty exciting stuff. Pretty exciting. So yeah. you won't want to miss tomorrow night. Uh, join us live on uh, Facebook. So. I think also when we let you go, we have a couple of clips of some things, uh, this and that kind of clip, and you'll kind of understand whenever the clip plays what that's all about. But I really appreciate you joining us today on this show. It's been an honor. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank, you for, thank you for having me, and thank you for your support. I'll, I know I'll be leaning on you from time to time for your help. Yeah. So I, I appreciate everything you've done. Well, you can call anytime. So I you appreciate, know that. I appreciate that. Yep. Yep. So, uh, signing off for our season finale of chats with the chairman. I'm the host and chairman of the board, Kevin Pearson. Thanks everyone. So, Kim, Hi. glad you could join us. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So, got a couple of questions for you. Okay. Vacation or staycation? Vacation. Definitely. Absolutely, because I live in Las Vegas and everyone <laughs> vacations here and I don't want to be here, so I'm out. <laughs> so, what's your favorite type of vacation? What do you like to do? Camping. Camping? Yeah, we've camped probably about 20 times since COVID hit. Okay. It's just an easy way to get away from everything. So yeah, camping. We have like a razor. Like RV camping. We have a, yeah, or... yeah. No tents. No I'm tents. Over that. It's okay. glamping. Glamping. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. okay. Early riser, like morning person, or night owl. As long as I have coffee, early riser. <laughs> okay. <And> without neither. <laughs> Summer or winter, and I don't even know living in vegas if you know what winter is but you know you can maybe imagine yeah it, i would say uh winter for sure well <laughs> maybe our winter <laughs> our winter we sometimes get snow if that it'll just drizzle a little bit summers out here are unbearable right <laughs> They're right like 110 115 sometimes so i would definitely say winter for me <laughs> our winter <laughs> well no yeah and what's winter anything below 90 <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay usually like maybe 30 degrees maybe 40. <laughs> <laughs> okay. glass half full or glass half empty half full i like to be optimistic yeah yeah how about you oh uh, i i perceive myself as it being half full I, I don't know that I'm always like that, but I like to think that I am. Dog or cat? We have two dogs, two turtles, a mouse, and now four fish, but I prefer a dog. 
Um, it's funny that you asked me that because my son is all about kittens right now and he okay. is dying to have a cat. So okay. we're kind of going through the whole, are you responsible enough? So we're giving him a test, six month test. And if he makes it, he'll, we'll have a cat too. Yes. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, we have pared down. The fish just died, I don't know, like a month or two ago. <laughs> and there's no more 4-H animals. So no more steers, goats, rabbits, <laughs> whatever. So we just, we're down to a dog. And so that's been nice. The yes. feed bill is a lot less. I could imagine. Yeah. Do you enjoy the lake more or the ocean? I enjoy the ocean more because the fish are more fun to catch. Uh, that's true. Yeah. More variety. And bigger fight. Bigger fight. Right, right. But you're a long ways away from the ocean, so you don't get to enjoy it as much. If the wind's blowing just right out at Lake Mead, it's like the ocean. <laughs> well, that's true. Right. That's true. Do you like to see the future or change the past? I think I would rather see the future than change the past. I think I'm with you too because it, I, I don't really like to look back and yeah. second guess. Yeah. It's a no brainer for me, but passenger or driver? Passenger. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, I prefer to relax and hang out until we get to the destination as, as opposed to having maybe a passenger that likes to backseat drive or, you know, are we there yet? Like for instance, my son, are we there yet? Can I have the iPad? Can I this? Can I that? When I'm driving, it's a little hard. <laughs> right. But being a passenger, you can like sightsee depending on where you're driving, you know, and you don't have to deal with the stop and go traffic here. Uh, that's true. That's true. I, I guess I always have to be the driver. iOS or Android? Android all the way. I am completely illiterate when it comes to anything <laughs> Apple. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm like, one button? Mm, no. Android. Call or text? I prefer text, but there are some situations where a text is not appropriate. I, I would agree. Uh, I guess all the years of owning a business, I got to where I didn't like answering the phone. <laughs> so. You know, text is simpler, but there's a lot of situations where you can you lose the, the intent. Yes. Do you enjoy going to the movie theater or watching like movies at home, maybe on Netflix or something, uh, something like that? I think I'd rather watch the movies at the movies. Cause like, I like watching scary movies and I like to be engulfed in the movie kind of, you know, with all the surround sound, it's really nice and you kind of get stuck in the movie. Like with Netflix, I don't have surround sound at home, so it's just kind of like, it's on the screen and I can hide from it, but it just doesn't scare me as much as when you're in the movie theaters. I gotcha. <laughs> the popcorn's better too, yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> the food's better. Right. Do you like to dine in at the restaurant or do you like delivery? Or I guess we could have another option. We could have takeout. Do you like to go and bring it home or, you know, that kind of thing? Dine in. I think your food is a lot more fresh when you dine in opposed to takeout or delivery. Right, because it's losing all its heat on the ride to your house. Yeah. Yeah, or like if they keep it warm, if you have like fries or something, you get them and they're soggy. And they're soggy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's right. not fun. Yeah, plus it's a different experience just eating out. Then you don't have to clean up. Do I have any questions? What's your favorite movie? <sighs> so, I don't really watch movies. I just don't. I, I, if you can name like any movie, there's a good chance I've never seen it. So, I just, I don't know. I just don't spend a whole lot of time watching movies. You're very busy. <laughs> yeah, but my, I guess my favorite one of all time would go back to whenever I was in high school and it'd be Karate Kid. I want to know if you could go one place in the whole world, where would you go? Oh, well, I think that's an easy one. Um, 
Deborah wants to go to Italy. So I think we're gonna end up going there really soon, but um, just, just always wanted to go there. So we have to make that happen. You're a smart man doing what the wife wants. That, that's it. That's what would be your weirdest food combination? Ooh, something, well, there's probably two and they both involve syrup. So <laughs> <laughs> I like peanut butter and syrup and can just mix that up and eat a bowl of it. And I've <laughs> enjoyed that since I was a kid. And then whenever I get hash browns, I have to have syrup on my hash browns. <laughs> it, it makes it sweet. <laughs> yeah, my mom got me started on that when I was a kid. And yeah, I think at least one of my kids enjoys that now too. Mm -hmm. So I've passed down the weirdness. <laughs> yeah, how about you? Um, I really like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but it's peanut butter and butter and jelly sandwiches. Peanut butter and butter? Wait, you yeah. mix the butter in with so it or I do you do, layer? I layer it. <laughs> okay. So the first layer has to be butter, then peanut butter, and then jelly. Full jam. And then you squish it all together. It tastes really good because it's like really cold butter with the really cold jam and then like the room temperature peanut butter, but it tastes really good together. <laughs> okay. It sounds weird, but it's really good. <laughs> okay. After your term is over with immediate past chair, mm -hmm. do you want to be back on the board? So if you ask me today, I'll say no. I don't know if that'll change in a couple of years, but you know, the plan is to kind of stay involved some way or the other, be on uh, different committees, that kind of thing, just like I was before I got on the board. So it's kind of been a thing. I guess I've been on a committee or on the board for close to 20 years, probably 20 years now. And so, um, so keep volunteering and keep doing things is just kind of natural. But I don't know about being back on the board. I think I may need a little time <laughs> off the board before, before that happens. Yeah. That's a wrap. Awesome.